This is the 2020 Sherco SEF factory. I've been riding the bike for about 30 minutes now. As you can see, we're on a uh, very dusty trail here. I figured it's time to start filming and start talking about what I'm feeling on the bike after a half hour. You'll notice it's a pretty rocky trail. This is a very awesome mountain single track trail that we've got here in Utah. Yeah! The uh, 300 motor. So this is a 304 stroke. And you know the first few minutes on this bike I had this bike in 2017, so this is three model years later. And the first few minutes on the bike, it's a little bit, you know, just like, eh, so-so on that motor. You can hear it lugging here. Because it's not a super snappy 300, like, see that? Um, it's not a super snappy motor, but what it is is a very luggable, tractable motor. So, I was a little underwhelmed at first on the motor, just the power. And again, this is not a review. I won't do a review, a full review on this bike for several months. So please don't say, well, I saw Kyle's initial review. That is not what this is. These are. These are just the first few minutes. Now this fork, oh yeah. This is a KYB fork and I had, I've had three different KYB forks on this trail in the past couple of months. One was the Beta Race Edition. Um, one was the Yamaha YZ250FX and one was this one in stock form handling this ki this type of stuff th those rocks that you saw back there on that hill climb and the roots and the things on the side of the trail here this fork is handling uh, far better than the beta in its stock form and might I say far better than the Yamaha in its stock form the Yamaha was super great out in the desert but it wasn't super great up here this one is way better up here got a sage hand come on baby get out of the way there we go you don't want to kill a sage hand this these forks up here are actually doing awesome so I rode it for about 25 minutes in this in kind of the stock a stock kind of generic configuration even though Sherco's manual says nothing about the KYBs it talks to you about the WP fork that's on the standard race edition it talks to you about some other fork that the bike doesn't have it doesn't talk to you about the KYB but I basically just kind of said the KYB up in the middle clickers about 12 clicks out on compression and rebound which is pretty standard and it was doing really well for this type of stuff I was a little surprised how well it was handling well then just a second ago I'm like hey I wonder what would happen because we're not doing super high speed here we're doing lower speed technical stuff. I'm like, with, I shouldn't say technical, but lower speed uh, rocky stuff. And I thought, what would happen if I took these clickers all the way out? So, yes, KYB has no finger clickers on the top. And yes, I do have one of those race tech flat screwdriver head things, but I wasn't able to count the freaking clicks. So, I took my bars off, and I used a real screwdriver on there, and I'm like, you know what? I was just gonna go out 
like three clicks of compression. But since it's such a pain in the arse um, to take the bars off to count these clicks, I just decided to go all the way out. So turns out this has about 21 clicks of adjustability on the compression up on the top of these forks. Yes, I realize that some of you guys are going to say, well, hey, in my Sherco manual, it says that compression is down on the bottom. Well, that's for the WP setup. These KYB forks are compression on the top. It's stamped right into the top cap. So I went all the way out on compression. And this bike is, these forks are soaking it up, dude. I am still only at 13 clicks out, I believe, on the rebound down below on the bottom. So I'm all the way, 21 clicks out on compression on the top, soften them all the way up. I think that's what uh, Rich Larson did with his uh, 2020 Sherco for his hard enduro style stuff. He's running the stock KYB with just loosening his clickers. I don't know if he loosened his all the way like I just did, but anyway, as far as the changes that I made to the shock, I'm still um, working on that. All I did was I took three clicks of compression out of the shock. So low speed, that is. So I opened it up three clicks on the low speed. And seems to be doing well. I might speed up my compression on the, or I speed up my rebound just a touch. Got a little bit of a dead feeling to it. But that's the thing is these Shurkos, they have their own feeling to them. Oh, something else I just noticed and I have noticed. The front end of this bike is extremely light. So I always set my head bearing tension to make sure that, you know, I've got, I don't have too much slop, but it's not too, too tight. And last night I purposely set this up. Um, so it was um, plenty snug on my head bearing up here on the front of the bike. The reason why I did that is because I, know from having two other Shurkos, these Shurkos end up feeling very light on the front end. Um, and this one feels extremely light, extremely agile, um, to the point that it's almost a little bit skittish. Like the front end of this bike feels more like a two-stroke. It's just kind of dancing all over the place, which uh, I don't mind. It's something that you have to get used to, you know, and every bike is an individual. Everyone feels slightly different than the next. I haven't been on this section of the trail this year. Um, just that last section back there is where I've been on all those bikes. And Anyway, lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I was talking about the, the forks. No, the front end. The front end of this bike is extremely light. The bikes feel extremely light. You might have seen by the time this, you watch, excuse me, this video, that this bike got seven pounds lighter um, from the last time that I tested it. So that's pretty cool. The bike feels light. It feels agile. The motor is definitely more of a mid-range motor. Like I'm comparing it to the YZ250FX that I just had. That YZ250FX was just like fire-breathing dragon, super snappy. This one is more, it just feels like it's a little slower revving and more torquey than anything. Not like super explosive. So it's not gonna like overwhelm you right off the bat. 
Something else I've noticed. You'll be like, Kyle, there's no, t there's no cuts in this video. How did you notice all these things? Well, I've been doing this for a decade now, swapping bikes all the time, riding different bikes all the time. The foot pegs on the Sherco, they are completely flat. There is no upward camber to them. This is something I didn't notice before when I had my prior Shercos, but I'm betting it was the same. Now that it's a few years later, it's something that I noticed immediately after getting on the bike. See that my front end felt so light. It almost deflect, it was kind of deflecting there just a little bit. I think this head, steering head angle is just a little steeper on this. Anyway, what was I talking about? Freak. Oh yeah, foot pegs. Foot pegs, these foot pegs are flat. There is no upward camber to them. Um, you can get used to anything. All the bikes that I've been riding, all of the bikes, KTM, Beta, Yamaha, um, Husqvarna, they've all had a significant upward camber to the pegs. That makes you feel kind of more locked into the bike, in my opinion. Um, this is just a flat, neutral um, feeling. I'm sure you can get used to that. I'm sure I would get used to it the more I ride it here. But it is something that I know. It doesn't make me feel like I'm quite as locked in on the bike on the foot pegs. Something else I've noticed. There is a quite a bit of engine braking on this bike. Now, I try to ride four strokes differently than two strokes, which is to say don't chop the throttle when I'm on a four stroke because I don't love the whole engine braking sensation. I don't like that. This one has a quite a bit of engine braking, more so than the Yamaha I just came off of. And while it's hard to say for sure, because I haven't ridden the Beta 390 for a while, I believe the Beta 390 felt like it had less engine and braking than this one. Could be wrong. Something else. This Sherco also feels like, oh, the gates go around the gate right here. This Sherco also feels like the uh, foot pregs there's more vibration in the bike than what I'm used to on a four stroke. I mean, I can feel my feet tingling just a little bit. Is it a big deal? No, but I'm just telling you for a four stroke, there's more vibration than I'm used to feeling. Man, this thing feels super light, jeez. Especially you get off the motor, off engine braking, and get going down that hill, and the feel, thing feels like mountain bike, mountain bike esque. That's pretty cool. Now, to some guys, they'll be like, oh, this thing's too, too skittish. I'm not gonna say that. I think it feels really just like light and playful. This ride may be coming back in the dark. You might be able to see that headlight on the bike. I don't want to just rely on that, so I'm actually carrying a uh, helmet light also for the ride back. this one is like so many trails in Utah unfortunately this one is an out and back it doesn't have a loop well you could to turn it into a loop but you'd be riding oh there's neutral you'd be riding the road which I don't want to do
So yeah, those are some initial impressions for you. How's that for drinking from my fire hose? That's what I've been thinking about the last few minutes on the bike. And now you know.